The Royal Court of Brunei releases a new photo of Prince Abdul Matina Brunei and his fiancée ahead of their wedding celebrations next week. The Imperial Family of Japan hosts a New Year celebration ceremony in Tokyo. The Palais Poncier de Monaco releases a Sovereign Prince couple's New Year video speech. And Queen Margrethe II of Denmark hosts her final New Year's gala banquet in Copenhagen. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone, and Happy New Year. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Monday, January 1st, 2024. This evening in Copenhagen, Her Majesty, Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, hosted her annual and final New Year's reception and gala banquet for members of the Danish government. The Speaker of the Parliament, Mr. Soren Gate, and local government representatives at Klusen the Seventh Palace at Emilienborg. Guests attending the gala banquet included their Royal Highnesses, Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, their Royal Highnesses, Prince Joachim and Princess Marie of Denmark, Her Royal Highness, Princess Benedicte of Denmark, members of the Crown Prince Couple's Court, members of Princess Benedicte's Court, and members of Her Majesty the Queen's Court. So what was on the menu? Well, guests enjoyed game consomme Celestine, truffle stuffed crepes, Danish veal with sauce. St. Honoré cake, Rosenborg wine, and of course wines from Chateau de Cakes. Last evening, the Queen delivered her 52nd annual New Year's speech from the reception room at Klusen Night Slot at Amelienborg. As I mentioned in last evening's episode, the beloved Queen announced that she would abdicate the throne in favor of her son, His Royal Highness Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark, on January 14, 2024. In her speech, the Queen noted that after 52 years as the Queen of Denmark, it was time to pass on the responsibility to the next generation. The Queen also spoke about events that have happened during the year 2023, including the 80th anniversary of the rescue of the Danish Jews in October and the rise in anti-Semitism, noting that it is, quote, unfortunate and shameful. Tonight, I want to make an unequivocal call for all of us in Denmark to treat each other with respect. We must step closer to each other, not distance ourselves from each other. We must remember that we are all human. This applies to both Jews and Palestinians." End quote. The Queen also spoke about the war in Ukraine and that the Ukrainians' fight for freedom must not be forgotten. The Queen's speech also focused on climate change. Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark's participation in the recent COP28 in Dubai, technology, AI, the Danish Armed Forces, the Emergency Management Agency, the Commonwealth, and her grandson, His Royal Highness, Prince Christian of Denmark, stating, quote, We will remember the year 2023 as a year in which we could celebrate that my grandchild, Prince Christian, turned 18. It was a great day, and I believe a wonderful day for him. He presented himself in a way that made all his family proud of him. He was surrounded by nice, excited, and happy young people from the entire kingdom, and he made a speech that commanded great respect. It made his grandmother proud. Prince Christian said things as they were. It was not so common when I was young. Today, young people dare to show that they can be insecure too. This openness is a strength which we others must admire and from which we can learn. End quote. If I may, I would like to circle back to Her Majesty the Queen's decision to abdicate and what will happen next. The Prime Minister of Denmark's office issued a statement announcing that the Queen will, quote, continue to be titled as Her Majesty after the change of throne, end quote. So after the change of throne, I believe Her Majesty's title will be Her Majesty Emerita Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, though I could be wrong. No one really knows at this time, not even armchair royal historians on Twitter. Now, concerning Prince Christian and what his role will be after January 14th, well, I do believe that the new Crown Prince Christian will accompany his parents on several important events in 2024. Last October, the office of the Prime Minister of Denmark, Ms. Meta Fredriksson, announced that Prince Christian would not receive an appanage until he turns 21 years old in the year 2026 unless he has become heir to the throne before the age of 21. 
According to Danish historian Mr. Lars Sorensen, now that quote, everything has changed with the decision on the part of the queen, and therefore, by all accounts, he will start receiving an appanage when his position changes, end quote. Royal historian Professor Sebastian Olden Jorgensen from the University of Copenhagen respectfully disagrees with Mr. Sorensen, stating, quote, I think it's very difficult to say exactly when he will start receiving an appanage. The royal house does not want to appear greedy. If it were set up in such a way that if he performs royal duties, he will receive an appanage, end quote. As I mentioned in last evening's episode, which you can watch right here in the link above, right here on the top right, there will be no lavish coronation for the new king of Denmark. So what will happen? On January 14th, there will be a Council of State meeting at Christiansborg Slot, where the Queen will officially abdicate the throne. Then, the Council of State will formally approve Crown Prince Frederick as king. Thereafter, Prime Minister Meta Frederiksen and Crown Prince Frederick will step onto the balcony at Christiansborg, where the proclamation will take place. After a speech from the Prime Minister, she then will say three times, Long live the new king. And that's it. Simple. Done. Love it. The Crown Prince will then be known as His Majesty King Frederick X of Denmark. Now, there could be a very, very slight chance that Queen Margrethe II will be by Crown Prince Frederick's side during the proclamation. But the balcony is small, so I kind of doubt it. Who knows? No one knows. Detailed information about the changing of the throne will be announced in due course, so please stay tuned. In Oslo, His Majesty King Harald V of Norway delivered his traditional New Year's speech from the Royal Palace. The king began his speech with a quote from the 2023 Nobel Prize winner for literature, Jon Fossa, stating, quote, Invisible hands hire us. These invisible hands can be so many different things. Love, friendship, a belief in God, will and hope. We all need some invisible hands, and many of us need them a little extra now, both here at home and the world around us. Tonight, I want to encourage you to light candles, a light for all who suffer in wars and conflicts, a light for people we miss, a light for hope, hope that a better world where we all can live in freedom and in peace with each other must be possible. Hope that what is difficult in our lives must become a little easier to live with." End quote. The king went on to speak about the importance of community, patience, and respect for others. In Monacoville, the Palais Poncier de Monaco released their Serene Highnesses, Prince Albert II and Princess Charlene of Monaco's pre-recorded New Year speech. The Sovereign Prince family is currently on a cruise in Antarctica, according to Prince Albert II in a recent interview. In the New Year's speech, the Sovereign Prince spoke about the events that took place in the Principality in 2023, including the year-long centenary celebrations of the birth of Prince Rainier III, noting how his reign modernized the Principality by, quote, making Monaco a prosperous and dynamic state, outward-looking and active in the concert of nations. 2023 also marked the 30th anniversary of the Principality's accession to the United Nations, and I want to take this opportunity to reaffirm my dedication to multilateralism and respect for our international commitments. Our unity and uniqueness are a shield against the problems that today beset so many of our Western societies, and I consider it my wholehearted duty to ensure that our community remains cohesive and prosperous. History has too often shown how fragile nations can be, and so in an increasingly complex and unstable world, it is vital we stay the course. I know I can rely on those women and men who have been entrusted with new responsibilities. I know that I can count on the people of Monaco, our residents, and our partners, all committed to playing their part in maintaining that unity upon which over 700 years ago, and no matter what challenges we have faced, we have built our history and looked to the future. We cannot predict the future, but we can prepare for it. We may not foresee it, but we must create it. The year ahead heralds many challenges, but holds rich promise. We must continue to mobilize our efforts and devote all our energy to the cause of peace, 
mutual acceptance and solidarity. Dear compatriots, residents, and friends, the Princess and I send each and every one of you our very best wishes for 2024. May it bring you happiness, peace, joy, and good health. Bon année. Happy New Year. End quote. In Tokyo, their Imperial Majesties, Emperor Norihito and Empress Masako of Japan, hosted the traditional New Year's celebration ceremony at the Imperial Palace. Also attending the ceremony was Her Imperial Highness, Princess Aiko of Japan, their Imperial Highnesses, Crown Prince Akishino and Crown Princess Kiko of Japan, Her Imperial Highness, Princess Kako of Akishino, Her Imperial Highness, Princess Aikiko of Mikasa, Her Imperial Highness, Princess Yoku of Mikasa, and Her Imperial Highness, Princess Saguko of Takamato. During today's ceremony, Emperor Norihito gave a speech, stating, quote, I am truly happy to celebrate the new year together. As we begin the new year, I pray for the happiness of the people and the development of the country, end quote. According to the Imperial Household Agency, the Imperial family received greetings from the Prime Minister of Japan and members of the palace's Matsu no Ma in the morning. In the afternoon, the Imperial family received foreign ambassadors accredited to Japan. Today's ceremony was the first time in four years that the ladies of the Imperial family were allowed to wear their tiaras. Regarding the reason for the decision by the Emperor and Empress to allow the ladies to once again wear their tiaras, the Imperial Household Agency said, quote, In light of the fact that the status of the new coronavirus has been lowered under the Infectious Disease Control Act and the people's lives are returning to normal. End quote. Tomorrow, the Imperial family, along with their Imperial Majesties, Emperor Emeritus Akihito and Empress Emerita Mashiko of Japan, will appear on the balcony at the Imperial Palace to wave to the public on the occasion of the new year. Last evening, the Imperial Household Agency released new photos of their Imperial Majesties, Emperor Emeritus Akihito and Empress Emerita Mashiko of Japan, on the occasion of the new year. The image was taken on December 11th at Sento Imperial Palace in Tokyo. The IHA also released photos of the Crown Prince family of Japan. The image featuring their Imperial Highnesses, Crown Prince Akishino and Crown Princess Kiko of Japan, Her Imperial Highness, Princess Kako of Akishino, and His Imperial Highness, Prince Hisahito of Japan, was taken on December 19th at the family's home in Tokyo. Last Friday in Madrid, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain presided over the swearing-in of new government ministers of Spain at Palacio de la Zarzuela. Also attending the swearing-in was the Prime Minister of Spain, Mr. Pedro Sanchez Perez Castellón, the President of the Congreso de los Deputados, Ms. Francina Armengol, the President of El Senado, Mr. Pedro Ryan Ojeda, and the President of the Constitutional Court, Mr. Candido Conde Pombido, to name a few. According to the Royal Court of Spain, the new ministers took the oath before a facet mill copy of the Constitution of Spain, edited by the Cortes Generales in 1980, opened by Title IV, which deals with the government and the administration. And finally, the Royal Court of Brunei released a new photo of His Royal Highness, Prince Abdul Matina Brunei, and his fiancée, Miss Anissa Isa Kalibic, ahead of their wedding, beginning on January 8th, 2024. And boy, it's going to be a wedding. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I really do appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Tuesday, January 2nd, with all the latest royal news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, again, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care. <laughs>